In today's video, we are going to replace a timing belt and a water pump on a 2011 Subaru Legacy with a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter engine. Roughly, it is an $800 job at a repair facility, but if you don't mind getting your hands dirty and saving some money, you are going to need a timing belt kit. I am using a kit made by Isend. Comes with all the pulleys, tensioner, and the water pump. Good quality parts. Considering the importance of this service, you definitely don't want to cut corners on parts quality. Also a good idea to have a new throttle body gasket, thermostat and coolant. One and a half gallon should be enough. Some common hand tools, thread sealer and Loctite. Links to all the products will be in the description. Let's get to it. It is always a good idea to disconnect the negative side of the battery to do a big job like this. And the first thing I like to do when replacing cooling system components is involved is start draining the coolant. There is the drain plug and to make sure we don't make a mess let's remove this splash shield. It is held by three push pins on each side. Trim panel removal tools work great for these. Two 12 millimeter bolts. and two more push pins closer to the middle. Let's place a drain pan under the radiator and using a Phillips screwdriver remove the drain plug. Now take off the radiator cap and let the coolant drain. While we're waiting for the coolant to drain let's remove these two push pins and this air inlet piece. Next goes the upper radiator hose Move the clamps out of the way and twist it to break it loose. Next let's remove this drive belt cover held by two push pins. Draw a quick sketch of the belt routing for reinstallation purposes. And turn the tensioner clockwise using a 15 millimeter wrench in combination with another wrench or a regular ratchet with a socket or a special belt removal tool. Now let's work on removing the radiator. It is held by these two brackets. In order to get to them we need to remove this cover. After removing all the push pins it takes some bending and wiggling it and it will come out. Next go the two 12 millimeter bracket bolts and the brackets. We are going to keep the fans on the radiator. Let's just disconnect the connectors. Here is one and the other one we'll get to from underneath. There is the lower radiator hose we need to disconnect. There is the transmission cooler lines going into the radiator if you have automatic transmission. And there is our connector. I'm going to disconnect the radiator hose from the engine side so I can remove it from the vehicle with the radiator. If it doesn't want to come off, try twisting it. And you can also use a tool like this to break it loose from the thermostat housing. Be prepared for some coolant to spill. Even though we drained the radiator, there is still some coolant leftovers throughout the cooling system. Next, we're going to disconnect the transmission cooler lines. Make sure to use a separate drain pan for oils. Recycled places do not like those two mixed. You can use special pinching tools to reduce the mess. There is also pinching pliers like these, super quick and easy to use. Just a little bulk here. And now we can disconnect the radiator fan connector. Just push this tab down and pull the connector out. And now the radiator is ready to come out. You can see I'm holding the lower radiator hose up to clear all the obstacles and to reduce spills. And look how much room we now have. Always check and make sure you're not missing radiator mount bushings, especially if you're replacing the radiator. You can see one of them is stuck to the radiator. Let's remove it and place it back where it belongs. Sometimes they fall out and get left on the floor and you don't find them until you drive the car out and start cleaning the floor. 
Now let's remove this stopper rod. It is held by three 14 millimeter bolts. And it's out. Let's also disconnect these two O2 sensors so they're not in the way of our timing cover. Now on the driver's side, we have a small timing cover held by three 10 millimeter bolts. And now you can see this is the original Subaru belt. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the crankshaft pulley. It is held by a 22 millimeter bolt. You can use an impact gun. That is the most common option. Another option some mechanics use is put a breaker bar on this way and put a floor jack under it like this to prevent the breaker bar from moving. Then bump the key for a split second like you're starting the engine. The starter will turn the motor over and bust that bolt loose. You don't want to start the engine, you just want to crank it over for a second. And the third option is the option I'm going to use today. Let's remove this air intake boot. There is a cover that pops out and two clamps tightened with eight millimeter screws. Remove those and the air intake boot should come right out. There is also a vent hose right there that needs to be disconnected. And right there underneath the throttle body is a little cover that we're trying to get to. So let's remove the throttle body, just four 10 millimeter bolts. You can probably reuse the throttle body gasket, but I would recommend getting a new one. With the throttle body out of the way, let's remove this cover. Using a long pry bar, we can just keep the flex plate from turning. Just don't pry on the bolts. Another option, if I put a mirror here, you can see there are teeth on the outside of the flex plate or the torque converter. That's what the starter grabs onto when it turns the engine over. So you can fit something like this in there. It is best if you can have an assistant hold the back of the engine with a pry bar as you're trying to break the crankshaft bully bolt at the front. With the bolt removed, the pulley should slide right out. It doesn't require any harmonic balance or puller tools. If it's pretty tight on there, use a soft hammer and tap on the pulley from left and right and eventually it will come out. By the way, if you know a better way to do any part of this job, please share it in the comments. It is amazing sometimes to see the things people come up with. Next, we go around the timing belt cover and remove all the 10 millimeter bolts. and the timing cover comes right out. Right here is the only spot that has a smaller bolt. Take note of that. Now, since the crankshaft bolt is too long to fit in without the pulley, I like to use an old axle nut as a spacer. That way I can hold the nut and break the bolt loose when I'm done with the installation. I'm going to turn the crankshaft clockwise until I set everything in time. There is our crankshaft marks and there is our camshaft marks. One and two. Next, I'm going to remove the timing belt tensioner. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. Once the tensioner is removed, the belt comes right out. Next go the remaining three pulleys. All of these pulleys come in the kit and should be replaced. Two 10 millimeter bolts to remove the thermostat housing. Pop the thermostat out. This is how I do it. Definitely a good idea to install a new one. It is best to use factory stuff from the dealer, but if you're using aftermarket, make sure it is rated for OE temperature. Next, we're going to disconnect this hose from the water pump. And when it comes to replacing water pumps, what I like to do is place the new water pump nearby, 
and every bolt that comes out goes in the exact same spot of the new water pump. That way there is no mix up. Because oftentimes water pumps have different length bolts. Again, be prepared for some coolant to spill. Light tap with a soft hammer and the pump is free. Always compare the fins on the impeller, make sure they point in the same direction. Otherwise your pump will not work properly. Next let's put on safety glasses and turn on the grinder with wire wheel. Clean water pump bolts transferring them one by one to the old pump. Next it is also a good idea to put some thread sealer on the bolts. This is what I use, links will be in the description. It is not absolutely necessary on this car but on a lot of cars some water pump bolt holes go all the way through into the block which is basically a hole for coolant to escape through. That is why I put sealer on all water pump bolts, just one extra level of precaution. Next let's remove this metal gasket. Metal gaskets are the best, they are so easy to remove and you don't have to scrape anything off. I'm going to evacuate all the remaining coolant, clean the mating surface with a wire brush, then rags and brake cleaner. Let's set the old pump with the bolts in it nearby. The kit came with a new thermostat gasket and this little rubber spacer, let's call it. It doesn't really seal anything, it just keeps water pump and oil pump separate. Now, this part is pretty tricky. We are going to put a couple of bolts in the water pump then put the gasket on to keep it aligned with the bolt holes and install the water pump. Some people use gasket sealants to keep the gasket in place during reassembly. It never worked for me but hey if you know a better way please share it in the comments. So I get one bolt started then a second one and then I check and make sure the gasket is in place. Here is a perfect example why you want to check it. The gasket is off. Once you confirm the gasket is in place, loosely install the rest of the bolts. And recheck everything with the mirror one more time. These bolts torque to 106 inch pounds in a sequence shown in the corner. But I've torqued it in a crisscross pattern and it worked every time just fine. Put this hose back on and the clamp. The thermostat fits inside this gasket. Install it in the water pump with the little bleeder opening at the top. Like this. Clean the thermostat housing. Again, thread sealer on the bolts and torque to 106 inch pounds. Next we're going to install new idler pulleys with some Loctite on the threads because we don't want to take any chances of these bolts coming loose. Idler pulley bolts torque to 29 foot-pounds. Now this gear looks a little different because of the bearing inside it, but the inner sleeve is the same. So just pay attention to these details to make sure you don't deem it as wrong part or put something on backwards. Before we put the new timing belt on, let's make sure our sprockets are still in place. The plastic one on the passenger side can be turned by hand, but the metal one on the driver's side is on cam lobes, so you will need a 17mm wrench to turn it. Be careful, it will feel like it's spring-loaded. My timing belt came with aligning marks, which definitely makes your job easier, but it's not absolutely necessary. Install it on the crankshaft, sprocket and work your way counterclockwise so that the tensioner will be the last point of installation. I'm using some binder clips to help me keep the belt in place. Always use colorful stuff. It is easier to notice and remember in case you drop or forget them. Next I'm going to install the tensioner with some Loctite on the bolt. Make sure there is a washer on the back side it comes with an o-ring to keep it in place. When you first install the bolt the tensioner sits a little crooked so push on the pulley toward the engine to keep it straight so that the bolt doesn't go in crooked. 
and it torques to 29 foot-pounds like the rest of them. The pulley on the tensioner is only 18 foot-pounds and should come tight from the factory, but just to make sure I'll check it anyway. Better be safe than sorry. 18 foot-pounds. Once everything is installed, confirm all the timing marks are still aligned. If they are not, remove the tensioner and reset the belt. My marks are aligned, so I'm going to pull the tensioner retaining pin out, letting the tensioner apply tension to the belt. Now let's turn the crankshaft two revolutions, which will turn our camshafts one full revolution. And let's recheck the timing. Now, don't worry about the belt marks, those won't align anymore. But so long as all the sprockets are in time, we can start putting everything back together. This main timing cover has one bolt hole with a sleeve in it. That's where the small bolt fits in. The rest of the bolts will look like this. Timing cover bolts torque to 45 inch pounds. I should have taken the crankshaft bolt out before putting the cover on. It would have been easier to fit the wrench on the axle nut to hold it in place. Now let's install the harmonic balancer. I put some thread sealer on the crank pulley bolt, uh, which torques in two steps. 35 foot-pounds first, and then additional 60 degrees. Now we can put the flex plate cover back in, install the throttle body, Preferably with a new gasket. Bolts torque to 71 inch pounds. Next goes the air intake boot. Tighten up the clamps and install the little cover. Reconnect the O2 sensors. Install the small timing cover. Install the stopper rod, the radiator, reconnect the fans, transmission cooler lines, radiator hoses, and install the covers. You get the idea. Fill it with coolant, start it up, and make sure it runs. Install the timing belt sticker, and the job is done. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to see more videos of this kind. Share your tips and experiences in the comments below. Links to the products will be in the description. Thank you for watching. Good luck and take care.